I was really looking forward to the Beach Boys being sung after Glitter. Well, uh, thank you guys. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm Barbara Buffalo, and I'm here tonight to talk about a very light-hearted subject that is very near and dear to my heart, climate change. Uh, <laughs> you're maybe at the wrong room. Um, so no, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but 97% of scientists agree that the climate warming trends we've experienced over the last century are due to human activity. And that's a big deal, and we should be worried about it. Now, I know you're wondering, you know, what, what can we do? Or what can I do as a normal citizen? Well, I'm here tonight to say you can do something, and you can do a lot. Together, we can do a whole heck of a lot. So let's talk briefly about what is climate change. So while other planets in Earth's solar system experience really hot weather or really cold weather, because of our atmosphere, our surface is actually pretty nice. It's mild and stable. We do this because of the thin greenhouse gases we have that make up that atmosphere. Now, normally, well, the solar rays come through, and they go through that, that atmosphere, and they warm our planet. Uh, how this works is that normally 30% of that solar rays, they go back into space. And so we kind of maintain normal temperatures. However, when we add more greenhouse gases to our atmosphere, we trap that solar energy in. And it warms our planet hotter than what we're really prepared for. This is climate change. So you might be wondering, well, but what can we do about it? And why should I care? Well, the reason why we should care as the United States is that we're 4% of the world's population. Annually, we're responsible for 14% of the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Cumulatively, that's 27%. So that's not really fair, and I think we should do something about it. Now, you might be asking, well, what's the big deal? You know, we're not really going to see this for a really long time. Well, this February was the second hottest February that we've ever recorded in modern record keeping. So I'll hear people saying, oh, no, but these are cycles. It's cool. You know, this will just happen and we'll be fine. So when was, when was the hottest February? That was last year. So we need to make a change. And the reason why we need to make a change is that I don't want to experience these things and neither do you. These things are, um, climate change will cause things like extreme heat events we'll have massive flooding and intense rainstorms. We'll have sea level rises that are flooding out Miami, New York City, Boston cities. We'll have, we'll lose our coastal reefs. We'll lose the beautiful Great Barrier Reef near Australia. And so you might say, but we're not in Australia, Barbara. We're not in Miami. What do I care about in Columbia, Missouri? Well, I'm here to say that we care because we're experiencing intense heat that's affecting our health and our community's health. We're experiencing more intense rainstorms that are affecting our infrastructure, flooding out, ruining our transportation, and closing our bridges. I'm saying that we care because this flooding and these high extreme weather events are affecting our agriculture and our economy and our lives. I'll give you an example from agriculture. So, you know, when uh, crops are growing, like corn for instance, and it's growing in a critical time if it experiences extreme heat or dry conditions, it could not grow a corn cob. We could have smaller corn cobs growing. So that means that it's not actually producing the grain that we have dedicated so much land to. And that means that we are not going to have corn on the cob the 4th of July, so to bring it home. That's a big deal. And that's not a future I want. But I don't want to just bore you or depress you. I also want to talk about what I work on, and that's to motivate you to make a change. So I have five things that I would love for you guys to take home with you. The first is get involved. If climate change and the, the, what happens afterwards is of concern to you, tell somebody. Tell your family. Tell your friends. Tell your elected officials. Just be involved. Get your voice out there. Quick note, sharing on Facebook or retweeting, not getting involved. That's your same circle. So get the word out farther. You need to make time with your elected officials. You need to call your representatives and let them know that this is something you're concerned about. 
We have legislation in Colombia that requires us to have a certain amount of renewable energy in our portfolio. We also require more energy efficient buildings because we know that they play a lot, or a big role in the carbon footprint. So related to that, your second one is save energy. So in Colombia, our greenhouse gas emissions, the majority of this is all from the built environment. This is residential, commercial, and industrial. And that big blue wedge, that's our, the energy, excuse me, energy used in our homes. So you can actually make a big difference. The energy we save in our homes, just changing the thermostat, that's the most impactful thing you can do to affect climate change. You know, we always joke that you could turn down the thermostat when you're not there, like in the wintertime, because your couch doesn't care. We know one of the things that our utility recommends is to set your thermostat to at least 78 in the summertime and 68 in the wintertime. I'm giving real facts that you can write down and remember. So these are a big way to affect climate change at home. The third way is how you get around. Transportation accounts for 24% of the greenhouse gas emissions in Colombia. So walk, bike, take the bus, carpool. Just think about your active transportation. I also would love it if you guys thought about, you know, carpooling together, or even maybe if you don't have to make that errand to go, combine your errands. The other big one I always talk about, and this is related to my fourth fact, is that did you know that the average food product travels 1,500 miles to get to us? So what can we do better? We can go local. We can think about supporting local economy, buying local. Did you know that if you spent 1% of the food spending in Boone County, we would raise $4 million for the local economy. So think about where your food comes from. Processed foods takes a lot to manufacture and also takes a lot of carbon footprint to get to us. So let's support our local economy. And let's face it, it's really good food. The other thing, and this is really my main point, just be smart. Play an active role in the story of your life. Just because that's the way you've always done something doesn't mean that's the way you need to do it. I want people to think about their actions. I want them to also be critical of those actions. Please don't take this as a shame, but sometimes we also get on bandwagons of gimmicks and trends. I'll give you an example, and I know there's some people in the audience, sorry in advance. Um, just, you know, you may be worried about bees or monarchs or local pollinators, which is important because 74% 75% of our food comes from them, is as a result of them. So we need to support our pollinator habitats. However, planting really pretty milkweed and maybe, wait, let's see, I don't have it on there. Maybe um, those seeds that came with your cereal, maybe they're actually doing more harm than good. Because for instance, some of that milkweed is actually tropical milkweed that's not from Missouri. And so it blooms longer. So the monarchs stay around longer before they migrate down to Mexico. So they're here longer, they're more susceptible to disease, and they're outside of their migration cycle. So what I want you to think about is to apply that critical thinking, plant local foods, plant local pollinators, support your habitats, and then also just remember that you can make a difference, and together we can all make a difference. Thank you. Mm -hmm.